Hello, good afternoon. I am going to uh, go and uh, go through uh, how to saddle up a horse. And this is for my 4-H kids and also my regular riding school. And the first thing you want to do when you get here is you're going to get your helmet. So this is my tack room with all the uh, bridles and uh, cinches and saddles and everything and I have the helmets right here and I got boots and over here I have all the grooming buckets so the first thing you want to do is get your helmet on and then and after you get your helmet on then you're going to go ahead and get your tack which is the saddle the bridle the cinch your grooming uh, buckets so you get those um, I already have those out there by the horse but the first thing you want to do is get your saddle, get your, uh, get your, like I said, get your helmet on, get your saddle, get the horses that you're going to, the horse that you're going to ride, his bridle and his cinch, and then we're going to go ahead and take it out here to where the horse is at. So we're coming out here, and we're going to, I'm going to demonstrate on Amos. This is Amos right here. There he goes, hi boy. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how to get the horse. So we got to, um, we're going to go ahead and, and I'm going to go ahead and get put the camera in here so that we can see. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab, you're going to get the halter and the lead rope. You always, you always want to shut the gate behind you. So the first thing you want to do, this is a halter right here, and this is a lead rope. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the horse and put it around his neck, just like that. And you're going to bring the horse over here, and, where he, and he thinks he's caught. So you always have that lead rope over him because he thinks he's caught. Then you're going to get your bridle, I mean your halter, and put it over his muzzle. This is the muzzle. You're going to go over the top of his head, which is called the pole. So you put it over his head, and you're going to connect it just like that. Just like as if you were putting on a pair of pants. You know, you buckle your, you buckle your, your pant, your belt, onto your pants, so it's the same thing. So I'll bring, and then, and then once you get that on him, you always want to stay on the left side of the horse. So you gather your, your lead rope. And this is the way you, you have your horse, just like this on the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this around so you can see. And I'm going to go around showing you how to lead them around. You always lead, you always lead by, on the left side. OK, and you should always use body language. Come on, boy. <coughs> Pushing him back. Just like that, use your body. So we're going to go ahead and tie aim it up right here so we can I can show you how we're going to so whenever you're so when you're going to make a tie bring this close so always tie the horses up with these little uh, with these uh, hay ties because he was to pull this, he'll, he won't knock my whole place down, he'll just uh, rip the, the tie off. But if you tie him to a regular, a regular pole like this, you would want to do the quick release, which this takes time to learn, that's a quick release. So if he pulls it, he can't get, he can't get unloose. But if you pull it on this, it's a quick release. So if you ever, because a lot of places don't have these, but I use them just so that it doesn't rip my place down. But anyway, so you can just go ahead and do a quick release on here if you want to, or you can just go ahead and tie them because, like I said, this is he was to pull back. Uh, it would just this would it would rip this off, which is okay. So now the next, the first thing I do is I'm going to get some fly spray. Put the fly spray. In the, horse. the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fly spray. Put some fly spray on in this here because it's a lot of flies. First thing you want 
do to supply it on your horse. And some horses don't like to be don't like to be uh, sprayed in the face. So what I usually do sometimes is I put it on my hand just like that, and you can just put it on their face, around their eyes, just like that. And then uh, it's good to wear jeans so that way you can clean your hands off of that. Okay, the next thing I do is I get a rag and put the ink. Make see if the horses see if his eyes are dirty, so I just kind of clean his eyes off a little bit. So now I'm going to get my uh, the grooming bucket, which has curry for mud, a dandy brush for dust, my hoof pick. I also have a plastic uh, curry and another brush, and I have a tail brush and a main brush. So anyway, you get your uh, curry and you to, and we're going to go ahead and check to see if he has any mud. So we look around and we, whenever you go around a horse, safety is number one around it. So whenever you're going around a horse, you should always keep your hand on the horse to go around. And you should always stay close to him, just like this. You should always stay close to the horse. always stay close to your horse because if you're going to go around him you should either be really close to him or like really far away from him. Safety. Because he needs to know where you're at at all times. So you should always be touching your horse no matter what. Good boy. And you should try to bond with your horse to talk to him. Good boy. You're just a good boy, aren't you? So anyway, we looked around, there was no mud on there. So if there was any mud, we would have we would have taken it off. So the next thing I do is I use the dandy brush. And I'll do one side first. I'll do his front of his face, around his his ears, down his neck, down his chest, down his leg on his back, underneath here, where, underneath his belly right here, and where the cinch is going to go, and then, of course, on top of here with the saddle. And just keep going all the way down. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to do the same thing over here. Sweating a lot. It's pretty hot today. I'll be sweating. So you just brush him just like that all the way down. So now we're going to go over here and we're going to use the brush to brush his tail and his mane. And whenever you uh, use a tail, you know. I always stay on one side. So you want to get to the side and start brushing his his tail. You don't really want to be right directly behind him because he can't see. See, he can see me uh, over here. So he sees me over here. So he knows what I'm doing. So you always want to be aware of, of letting the horse know where you're at. Okay, so we brushed him on his tail. And then you're going to, we're going to give him a little brush through here on his mane, like that. Brush the front of his, right here is forelock, right in front of his, his face, right above his, this, the back over here is called the dock. That's the back of him. So now we're going to do picking his hoof. So we get the hook pick, and we're going to stand right next to him. Come on, boy. You got to talk to the horse, and you're just going to, you're going to pick his hook. 
We're going to go to the side right here. It's closer here. You can see. Just like that. You're going to clean right around there and right, be right there where the frog is. This is called the frog. And you want it right between the frog and around his hook, around the shoe there. Okay, you let his foot down. If he has any mud in the front of it, you want to scrape that off. Now to do the back one, that's a little more complicated. So we're going to go ahead and do that one. So you stand next to him. Come on, boy. You ask him to lift his foot up, and he's going to try to pull it. Whoa. You try to let him to relax it. I usually put it right on my leg right here. And we're going to go ahead and pick right here. It's quite a bit of step right there. Remember, this is a frog. I don't have any shoes on his back feet. You just want to clean those off. So you want to do all four of those. So anyway, so now that we got his hooves cleaned up, well maybe I better do all four so you go so you guys can you want to thinking you just have to do two of them. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do all four. like that. You can use this brush too to brush off stuff. See, look, he's even got a rock there. So that's what you want to look for. You want to look for rocks and stones that are inside the horse's uh, Hoof. So anyway, now we're going to go and get the sack. Well, first we're going to put the the pad. There's a pad. So we're going to go ahead and put that on it. And this is right here. This is called his withers. This part up here is called his wither. This big bone right up here. And that's where we're going to go ahead and put that um, pad. Sometimes I feel, you know, might want to put a, a blanket or something underneath it before they put the pad. And most pads will have a cutout here and a cutout here for his wither. You put that right where his wither is. Okay, so now we're going to go over here and get, get the sack. And this is a little 12-inch saddle. So I thought I'd make it easier on myself. So now we're going to put this pad right on him. And you want to put this gullet right here, it's called the gullet, right on the, right on the withers. Okay, this is, a, this is the horn, this is the pommel, the cantle. The horn, pommel, cantle, the seat. Here, this is the fender and this is the stirrup. And these are cinch straps or latigo straps. So you'll be learning all that too. It just takes time, you, it takes practice to learn to do this. Eventually you should be able to do, do all this in 10 minutes. So anyway, we're gonna put the cinch now. And so we're gonna come all around on the other side of the horse. Remember, you always wanna be touching him, no matter what, when you go around him, you wanna be touching him, good boy. Okay, and then this is the short latigo, the short cinch strap. So we got the little short strap here, and this cinch has a little pocket here, so we want to make sure that's on this side, so that way if you have any extra, you can stick it right in there. See that? So always make sure you got that on that on that side. Okay, so we got that on. So now we're going to go on the other side. And we're going to stitch him up. So it's a little bit, a little bit too short. So whenever it's a little bit too short, you're, that means that we're going to have to let it go on the other side a little bit. We have to come down a little bit. So on this side, we're going to have to come down another hole. So we come down one, another hole, just like that. And 
then we're going to go ahead and grab the stench. Put the stirrup up here so it's out of your way. And we're going to uh, go ahead and start wrapping this up. And you go around and go through the, these are called D-rings. These little silver things here are called D-rings. And there's some D-rings even underneath here. So, um, you want to do it like just twice until you can have like three. And then you're going to strap it up, pull it down. You don't want to make it too tight because he's breathing, he's puffing out. So we'll, we'll get it, we'll make it tighter once we get out to the arena. And I'm going to show you how to do a tea tie. Texas tea, they call it. And this is kind of a difficult tie, but eventually it, it just takes time and time. So you, you, you stick one strap this way, and you come around this way, and then you're going to bring it through the strap, the D-ring. It's like put, doing a tie, a men's tie, just like that. And that's how it looks, just like that. Bring that back. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put his bridle on. And I have here um, a breast collar, which I don't always have to put the breast collars on, but I will demonstrate. So a breast collar goes right over his chest, just like that. And you can strap it on up here to the D-ring. And then we're going to go on the other side to put the other side. even right here on his chest. And we're going to go ahead and put that on the, this D-ring on this side. And that's a little bit uneven, so we're going to go ahead and even that one out. Okay, it's evened out, so you can see it right there, and then this part goes down here at the bottom, as you can see, right here, see it right here, right into these little beads. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and put the, we're going to go ahead and put the bridle. the bridle. It has, this right here is the throat latch. This is the curb, um, the bit, and this is the curb chain, curb strap. It goes behind his, his neck, under his chin, and this is your, your rein. Okay. And this, this is a little more tricky. So, you put it around his head, put your hand, put your hand over his, between his, his uh, ears, bring the strap, and you're going to bring it over his muzzle, and then you're going to ask him to open his mouth, and bring it right up. And then you're going to bring it up, put one ear in, and put the left ear in. Make sure that the this brow band here is nice and straight. And now you're going to get throat latch. You don't have to make it real tight. And there you go. He's ready to go. And that took me about 20 minutes. But if you, normally to tack up it should take you 10 to 15 minutes. So he's all ready to go. And I, sometimes I put tie downs on the horses. A lot of horses don't need it, but some horses do. Uh, so I didn't demonstrate that, but you would just put the tie down on him. But anyway, this is the way you tack a horse up.
So if there's any questions, you can um, let me know. But so now when you guys get here, you'll all be able to tack a horse up in 10 minutes, right? Thanks. Bye.